Mr. Truman, my if you You gotta look at me now. Oh. Mr. Truman, my father would like to know if you were president today, what you would do about the farm situation. Mr. Should I call him Mr. President? That's all right. He likes to be called. Mr. President, what is your favorite hobby? Do it once more. Mr. President, what is your favorite hobby? Mr. President, the other day in Texas, you called Vice President Nixon a squirrel head. What did you mean by that? Mr. President, in world history, we, we have been talking about the elections. In 1960, who do you think will be the uh, president candidates on both parties? Mr. President, I've been, just been watching you on television. It's an extremely uh, good invention. But uh, what do you think it has done for politics? Has it helped it any? Mr. President, are you going to be spending Thanksgiving with Margaret and your grandchild? Mr. President, I've always uh, wondered what your favorite, who your favorite president was. Where would you put Mr. Eisenhower on your rank? Of, well, at least. Start over again. Where would you put Mr. Eisenhower on your list of presidents? Mr. President, you've probably gone to several states, and I've always wondered if, if you still hold Missouri above them all. Uh, I was just watching you on TV, and uh, I wondered what you think TV has, uh, has it affected politics in any way? Oh, yes, they make a lot of use of it, but it makes play actors out of politicians, and they're usually not yes, good ones. <laughs> uh, my father would like to ask you what you would do about the farm situation if you were the president today. I can't answer a hypothetical question. When I was president, I operated it for the welfare and benefit of the farmers. It hasn't been done you. since. Mm -hmm. But I can't tell you what would be the case now because I don't know all the facts. Mm -hmm. I'd like to give you a straight answer to it, and that's as near as I can come. Uh, while you were down in Texas the other day, you called Vice President Nixon a squirrel head. Would you mind telling me what you meant by that? Well, I meant that he had a sloping face and that he uh, is not exactly the type of man that should be President of the United States, no. although he thinks he is. I was comparing him with, uh, with John Garner, who was one of the greatest Vice Presidents we ever had. Uh, who is your favorite president? Well, I have a great many favorite presidents. If you uh, read an article that I had in Look magazine not long ago, you will find out who my favorite presidents are. There are five or six of them. Well, do you have a choice of anyone? Oh, yes. I have a choice of George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Andrew Jackson, Abraham Lincoln, Grover Cleveland, Woodrow Wilson, and Franklin Roosevelt. Now, if you can think of anybody else you'd like to hear about, I'll name him for you. Those um, are the great ones. Where do you rank Eisenhower? I know Frankie. He, oh. You can't rank a man until his uh, reputation is made, made and it mm -hmm. takes a whole 10 or 15 years after he's been there to find out. You can't rank a man who is in the office. They rank me as the lowest one that was ever there and they may have been right. I don't know. Well, in world history, we are talking about uh, the elections and uh, I wondered who you think the presidential uh, candidates will be in 1960? I have the slightest idea. We've got so many good candidates in the Democratic Party that I don't dare name one. I'd get into trouble. I think Nixon will be the candidate of the Republican Party, and I hope he will, because I think we can beat him easier than anybody else. It's in a campaign to drive the West out of Berlin. Now, you as the signer for the United States on the Potsdam Agreement must have some thoughts about this. You're in facing it, is it? Well, I kept them from doing it while I was president of the United States, and we'll have to keep them doing it again.
Well, what then do you think is our solution with dealing with the Russians in Europe? When you deal with the Russians, you want to be in a position of strength. They understand that, and that's the only language they do understand. And that's the only way you can get them to keep an agreement, is to be in a position to enforce it. Do you think we are now in a position of strength? I can't answer that question. You have to ask the man who is running the government. I can't answer that question because I'm not familiar with it. Do you have any notions on it at all? I make no conversation about things I don't know anything about. Then, Mr. President, what do you plan to do from now on? What is the thing you want to achieve from here on? Teach these youngsters what a government they have and what they have to do to keep it and how much sweat, blood, and tears it took to get it, and it may take that again to keep it. They've got to understand that. It, can't, it wasn't handed to us on a silver platter. We worked for it. Read your history. Thank you, Mr. President. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, now, young lady, you take care of yourself and do what the doctor tells you. You'll be out pretty shortly. Yes, you will. Thanks a lot. Mr. President, I wanted to know if you had any compliments on the trio that sang Happy Birthday to you. An humanitarian, former President of the United States of America, the Honorable Harry S. Truman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Chairman, and all these uh, distinguished guests, and all you good people who are here for the purpose of seeing this great addition to the welfare of this part of the state dedicated. You know, uh, the chairman introduced me as a statesman. I want to say to you that a statesman is a dead politician and I want to live another 50 years. <laughs> he hasn't been a politician, he never becomes a statesman, but people have to understand what he has done and look at it objectively and they can't do it while he's walking around. Nobody knows that better than I do. And I've been through the mill, I want to tell you. You know, this is a tremendously great event here today. It has been a, a problem with which the whole country is faced. While I was in the, in the United States Senate, we passed a bill known as the Hill-Burton Act. Mr. Hill comes from Alabama. Senator Burton came from Ohio and was afterwards a member of the Supreme Court of the United States. That Hilburton Act was for the very purpose for which you have made use of it, to create a place in the neighborhood where everyone would have all the facilities that are necessary these days to take care of people who are crippled. And since we have this tremendously <laughs> that this sort of a thing here is something that should happen all over the country. It's particularly necessary in these days when, due to the fact that we've made somebody step on the button, you know, when I've been going around not to make any political speech, but I'm very much interested in what you've done here. I think it's one of the greatest things possible. And it was a pleasure to me when Dr. Burns invited me to come down here and assist at the dedication of this wonderful building. I want to say to you that Dr. Burns and Dr. Graham, the Major General up there, were in the White House with me, and they were most efficient in what they had to do. They brought me out alive, which is something unusual.